In ever-rising markets, the profits simply accumulate until you need the money. The arrival of each brokerage statement provided the proof that smart investors couldn't lose. Access to credit, accelerated by new technology, diminished our standards, along with those of our lenders. But convenience must have some price. Waiting weeks for a response from a mailed credit application changed with the fax machine. But that only sped up one part of the transaction. Ubiquitous shared databases provided lenders with instant snapshots of our credit histories, profiles, and scores. No need for the personal touch. No need to develop a relationship when price determines who gets the business. Good morning, Mr. Carlotti. Hello, Curtis. How's the banking business? Fine, fine. How's business with you? Couldn't be better. Borrowers found the immediate feedback resulting from a few gratifying mouse clicks advantageous to the urge to splurge. Mortgage applications would eventually find their way onto the web. The new economy rekindled our sense of adventure. The manipulations had become a bit more subtle and polished. Just some of the revolutionary ways we're changing the lending industry. Hilo, radically simple. AmeriQuest Mortgage, proud sponsor of the American Dream. There are some things money can't buy. For home improvement stuff, there's MasterCard. The new country seemed to be a reservoir, and every road leading to it a vagrant stream of enterprise and adventure. Money, or what passed for money, was the only cheap thing to be had. Every crossroad and every avocation presented an opening through which a fortune was seen by the adventurer in near perspective. Credit was a thing of course. To refuse it, if the thing was ever done, were an insult for which a bowie knife were not a too summary or exemplary a means of redress. I'd be most grateful for the return of the blade. <laughs> Our burgeoning debt did not arise from a threat posed by the blade of a bowie knife. Rather, our seduction was shaped by a sophisticated media, bombarding us with alluring visions of an affluent lifestyle, available to anyone willing to take advantage of the credit they deserved. The subliminal power of media images to provoke consumers to indulge their every want, unburdened by concerns about mounting personal debt, or how they would repay those debts, cannot be overestimated. The upsurge in consumer spending of the 1990s far outstripped growth in personal income. Savings plummeted as every measure of debt expanded. We were borrowing more than a billion dollars a day from foreign savers, who shared our optimistic assessment of future returns from investment in the new economy. With the dollar and bonds rallying, that obviously is helping the stock market. We're up, as you pointed out, Karen, about, what, seven points today? Mm -hmm. uh, we're trading at about a four-week high. Excess credit and rising prices proved once again to be a potent formula for bubbling stock prices. After days of flirting with a record, the Dow Jones Industrial Average finally pushed through today, closing at a new all-time high. The Dow ended the day at 11,727, up 57 points, breaking the old record by five points. The outlook is for a 13th consecutive quarter of double-digit profit growth. Surrounded by the appearance of an extraordinarily large and rapid increase in wealth, indebted Americans sustained high levels of consumer confidence. 
The Consumer Confidence Index hit a three-year high of 105.8 in June, up from May's 103.1 revised reading, a signal that Americans are feeling better about the job market and where the economy is headed. The Dow Jones Industrials reached their high for the year on Tuesday. While the S&P hit a five-and-a-half-year high, as investors were cheered by improvements in consumer confidence and strong regional economic figures. Also, a conference board report finds that consumer confidence jumped to a six-year high. In the first hour of trading today, the Dow Industrial Average rose 78.52 points to 13,436.83. Participation in Wall Street's financial games set a new record along with the tech sector investment boom. Whereas less than 3% of American households owned stocks as the 19th century came to a close, by the peak of the 1929 stock bubble, estimates suggest that 20 to 30 percent of American households own shares in corporate America. The success of government reforms implemented in the 1990s to spur broader market participation through IRAs and 401ks climaxed in 1998 with nearly half of all American households having some stake in Wall Street. Thanks to TD Waterhouse, now we know. The personal portfolio review helped us adjust our risk to a level we're comfortable with. Times change. Is your investment portfolio keeping up? Find out at TD Waterhouse. Hey, everybody. We're looking for investment tips. I've got a hot one. Asbestos. It's a new miracle fiber. Like it? Love it. While a dazzling array of progressively miniaturized electronic gadgets tethered us to a brave new digital world, the fourth quarter of 1999 marked an unprecedented inflection point in the expanding net worth of American households. Miraculous economic growth accompanying the information revolution ballooned the net worth of American household wealth by $3 trillion in the last quarter of 1999 alone, almost entirely from skyrocketing stock prices. To place that in perspective, the growth in household net worth in this one quarter equaled that of the entire decade of the 1960s. It surpassed the growth from the decade-long housing boom of the 1970s by 50%. The golden age of prosperity seemed permanent. The depth of our trends can be measured by what was billed as the world's first Internet Age media and communications company when the CEOs of America Online and Time Warner announced the largest corporate merger in United States history. The remarkable deal, valued at $160 billion at the time of the January 2000 announcement, shocked the business world. Upstart AOL, a dial-up internet service provider, acquired the old world media mega conglomerate Time Warner. Even though Time Warner had vast media and cable holdings, as well as higher real-world profits, AOL made the purchase using its exorbitantly valued stock, worth twice that of Time Warner's. The imagined synergies of the merged companies were unrealistically reckoned at $360 billion. That same month, effervescent stock prices endowed 17 different dot-com companies with the resources to spend more than $2 million each on 30-second spots for Super Bowl 34 to enhance their name recognition. Computer.com. Computer stuff. It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. On March 10th, the dot-com bubble climaxed as the Nasdaq hit an all-time intraday high of 5,132. The following month, 
$2 trillion of net worth evaporated in a single week as the bubble burst. By October of 2002, $7 trillion in market capitalization had simply vanished as the Nasdaq collapsed, returning to 1996 price levels. Get-rich-quick schemes work even faster in reverse.